അക്യൂട്ട് ഇൻഫ്ലമേഷൻ ഇൻഫ്ലമേഷൻ ഇസ് എ ലോക്കൽ റെസ്പോൺസ് ഓഫ് വാസ്കുലറൈസ്ഡ് ടിഷ്യൂ ടു ഇൻഫെക്ഷൻ ആൻഡ് ടിഷ്യൂ ഡാമേജ് ദറ്റ് റെക്രൂട്ട്സ് സെൽസ് ആൻഡ് മോളിക്യൂൾസ് ഓഫ് ഹോസ്റ്റ് ഡിഫൻസ് ഫ്രം ദി സർക്കുലേഷൻ ടു ദ ലൊക്കേഷൻ വെർ they are required in order to eliminate or limit the spread of the offending agent the offending or injurious agent may be classified as follows infective agents like bacteria viruses and other toxins fungi and parasites immunological agents like humoral and cell mediated reactions physical agents like mechanical trauma heat cold etc chemical agents like organic and inorganic poisons inert materials like foreign bodies infection and inflammation are distinct from each other inflammation is the protective response of the body to a variety of etiological agents whereas infection is invasion into the body by harmful microbes and their resultant ill effects by their toxins inflammation involves two processes early inflammatory response and later followed by healing inflammation and healing may cause considerable harm to the body as well as in the case of anaphylaxis to insect bites the four pivotal signs of inflammation are rubor that is redness tumor swelling gala heat dolor pain functional laser loss of function types of inflammation depending on the duration of response inflammation may be classified as acute or chronic acute inflammation the duration of acute inflammation is short usually lasting less than 2 weeks It resolves quickly and is usually followed by healing. The main features of acute inflammation are accumulation of fluid and plasma at the affected site, intravascular activation of platelets, inflammatory cells in the form of polymorphonuclear inflammation. In some cases, the acute inflammatory response may be quite severe. and is termed as fulminant acute inflammation chronic inflammation the duration of chronic inflammation is longer and occurs after delay it may be due to the persistence of causative agent of acute inflammation or due to a stimulus that induces chronic inflammation from the beginning When there is acute exacerbations of chronic inflammation it is called chronic active inflammation The characteristic feature of chronic inflammation is presence of chronic inflammatory cells such as lymphocytes plasma cells and macrophages Presence of granulomatous inflammation granulation tissue formation acute inflammation acute inflammation is a continuous process it may be divided into two events vascular events and cellular events vascular events the earliest response to tissue injury is the alteration in the arterioles capillaries and venules it results in hemodynamic changes and changes in vascular permeability hemodynamic changes changes in the vascular flow 
and the caliber of small blood vessels in the injured tissue is the earliest feature of inflammatory response. The sequence of these changes is as follows. Transient vasoconstriction is the immediate vascular response of cell injury. It may last for about 3 to 5 seconds in the case of mild form of injury, but in severe injury, it may last for about 5 minutes. Persistent progressive vasodilation of arterioles occurs after the initial transient vasoconstriction. It may affect other components of the microcirculation like venules and capillaries. Redness and warmth at the site of acute inflammation is due to increased blood volume in the microvascular bed area as a result of vasodilation. Local hydrostatic pressure may increase as a result of progressive vasodilation resulting in transudation of fluid into the extracellular space. Increased concentration of red cells and thus raised blood viscosity results from slowing or stasis of microcirculation. The leukocyte sticks to the vascular endothelium as a result of slowing of stasis of microcirculation. Triple response. It is the demonstration of hemodynamic changes in inflammation. It involves firm stroking of the skin of inner aspect of forearm with a blunt point. The reaction produced in response to this is called triple response. It consists of the following. The local vasodilation of capillaries and venules appear as red line within few seconds after stroking. The vasodilation of the adjacent arterioles appear as bright reddish flare or flush surrounding the red line. The swelling or edema of the surrounding skin occurs due to transudation of fluid into the extravascular space. This is called wheel. Changes in vascular permeability The blood plasma escaped through the endothelial wall of peripheral vascular bed due to vasodilatation and consequent elevation of hydrostatic pressure results in transudate. Subsequent increase in vascular permeability of microcirculation is seen in the form of exudate. In inflamed tissues, the endothelial lining of microvasculature becomes more permeable resulting in a decrease in intravascular colloid osmotic pressure and a simultaneous increase in osmotic pressure of interstitial fluid. This results in excess outward flow of fluid into the interstitial compartment which is known as exudative inflammatory edema. Patterns of increased vascular permeability the change in permeability of endothelial layer of microvasculature may have one of the following mechanisms or its combination. Contraction of endothelial cells The endothelial cells develop temporary gaps between them due to their contraction resulting in vascular leakiness. Histamine, bradykinin and other chemicals mediate this process. The contraction begins immediately after injury and is of a short duration. It is the most prevalent mechanism of increased leakiness that affects venules, whereas 
capillaries and arterioles remain unaffected. Contraction or mild endothelial damage The cytoskeleton of endothelial cells undergoes structural reorganization resulting in reversible retraction at the intercellular junction or mild form of endothelial damage. It is mediated by cytokines such as interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha. It affects venules and capillaries. The response occurs after 4 to 6 hours after injury and lasts for several hours to days. Direct injury to endothelial cells Cell necrosis and appearance of physical gaps at the site of detached endothelial cells occur as a result of direct injury to the endothelium. The process of thrombosis involving platelets and fibrin is initiated at the site of damaged endothelial cells. This change affects the venules, capillaries and arterioles. The increased permeability may either appear immediately and last for several hours or days after the injury or may occur after a delay of 2 to 12 hours and may last for hours or days. Leukocyte mediated endothelium injury Activation of leukocytes occur after they adhere to the endothelium at the site of inflammation. These activated leukocytes release proteolytic enzymes and reactive oxygen species which may cause endothelial injury and increased vascular leakiness. It affects the venules and is often a late response. Increased permeability of neovasculature under the influence of vascular endothelial growth factor, the newly formed capillaries are excessively leaky during the process of repair. Cellular Events The cellular phase of inflammation consists of two processes. Exudation of leukocytes and phagocytosis. Exudation of leukocytes The most important feature of inflammatory response is the escape of leukocytes from the lumen of microvasculature to the interstitial tissue. Polymorphonuclear neutrophils followed later by macrophages and monocytes comprise the first line of body's defense mechanism. The sequence of events leading to migration of leukocytes are as follows. Changes in the formed elements of blood. There is initial increase in blood flow due to vasodilatation during the early stage of inflammation followed by slowing or stasis of bloodstream. There are changes in the normal axial flow of blood in the microcirculation due to stasis of blood. The normal axial flow consists of central stream of cells comprised by leukocytes and RPCs and peripheral cell-free layer of plasma close to the vessel wall. As a result of slowing and stasis, the central stream of cells widen and peripheral plasma zone becomes narrower because of loss of plasma by exudation. This is called margination. The neutrophils of the central column come close to the vessel wall as a result of this redistribution. This is called pavementing. Rolling and addition. The neutrophils which are peripherally marginated and pavemented slowly roll over the endothelial cells lining the vessel wall. This is called the rolling phase. Subsequently, the addition between the leukocyte and the endothelial cell becomes stronger.
This is called the adhesion phase. The rolling and adhesion phases are brought by the following cell adhesion molecules. Selectins The surface of activated endothelial cells express a group of cell adhesion molecules that are structurally composed of lectins or lectin-like protein molecules. The most predominant one in this category is S. Lewy X molecule. They recognize and bind to the glycoproteins and glycolipids on the cell surface of neutrophils. They are divided into three types. P-selectins. It is also called CD62. It is involved in rolling and is preformed and is stored in endothelial cells and platelets. E-selectins. It is also called ECAM. It is involved in both rolling and addition. It is synthesized by cytokine activated endothelial cells. L selectins. It is also called LCAM. It is involved in recruiting or circulating lymphocytes to the endothelial cells in lymph nodes. It is synthesized on the surface of lymphocytes and neutrophils. Integrins. These are a family of endothelial cell surface proteins that are activated during the initial loose adhesion between the endothelial cells and leukocytes. They have alpha CD11 and beta CD8 subunits. Simultaneously, the receptors for integrins on the neutrophils are also stimulated. This results in a firm adhesion between the endothelium and leukocyte. Immunoglobulin gene superfamily addition molecule A variety of immunoglobulin molecules present on most cells of the body comprise this group. They bring about cell-to-cell -cell contact through various other cell addition molecules and cytokines. They have a major role in recognition and binding of immunocompetent cells as under Intracellular Addition Molecule 1 It is also known as CD54 and Vascular Cell Addition Molecule 1 also called as CD106 allow a tighter addition and stabilize the interaction between leukocytes and endothelial cells. Platelet endothelial cell addition molecule 1 or CD31 is involved in leukocyte migration from endothelial surface. Emigration After the neutrophils stick to the surface of endothelium, it moves along the endothelial surface to find a suitable gap between the endothelial cells where the neutrophils throw out cytoplasmic pseudopods. These neutrophils cross the basement membrane by damaging it with the help of collagenase and escape out into the extravascular space. This is known as emigration. The basement membrane is repaired as soon as it is damaged. Chemotaxis the leukocytes undergo transmigration process by crossing several barriers like endothelium, basement membrane, perivascular myofibroblasts and matrix to ultimately reach the interstitial tissue. This is a chemotactic factor mediated process and is known as chemotaxis. The various chemotactic factors affecting neutrophils are Cytokines, that is interleukins IL-8, leukotriene B4. It is synthesized from arachidonic acid through the lipooxygenase pathway. Components of complement system C5A and C3A. Soluble bacterial products such as formulated peptides. Apart from neutrophils, 
many other inflammatory cells respond and take part in inflammation with the help of specific chemokines. Example, monocyte chemoattractant protein, MCP1, eotaxin chemotactic for eosinophils, natural killer cells for recognizing virally infected cells, etc. Phagocytosis The process of engulfment of solid particulate material by the cell is called phagocytosis. Cells that perform this function are called phagocytes. They are categorized into two types. Polymorphonuclear neutrophils. They are often referred to as microphages. They appear early in acute inflammatory response. Circulating monocytes and fixed tissue mononuclear phagocytes, commonly known as macrophages. When the neutrophils and macrophages reach the specific tissue space, they produce several proteolytic enzymes like lysozyme, protease, collagenase, elastase, lipase, proteinase, gelatinase and acid hydrolases. This is called enzymes break down extracellular matrix and collagen. Phagocytosis of the microbe or foreign particle by polymorphs and macrophages involves the following three steps. Recognition and attachment. Engulfment. Killing and degradation. Recognition and attachment. The expression of cell surface receptors like mannose receptor and scavenger receptor on macrophages which recognize microorganisms is the first step in phagocytosis. These microorganisms are further coated with specific proteins called opsonins from the serum which enhance the phagocytosis in a process called opsonization. Opsonins establish a bond between the phagocytic cell membrane and the bacteria. The various opsonins present in the serum and their corresponding receptors on the surface of phagocytic cells are the following. IgG opsonin. It is the naturally occurring antibody in the serum and is the FC fragment of immunoglobulin G. The polymorphonuclear neutrophils possess receptors for the same. C3B opsonins. It is a strong chemotactic agent that facilitates PMN's attraction towards bacteria. It is a fragment generated by the activation of complement pathway. Lectins. They are carbohydrate binding proteins in the plasma which bind to bacterial cell wall. Engulfment When the opsonized particle or microbe is attached to the surface of the phagocyte, it is ready for engulfment. The activation of actin filaments beneath the cell wall of phagocyte causes the formation of pseudopods around the particle or microbe which envelops it in a phagocytic vacuole. This causes the plasma membrane enclosing the particle to break from the cell surface in such a way that the membrane-lined phagocytic vacuole or phagosome becomes internalized in the cell and lies free in the cell cytoplasm. The phagosome now fuses with one or more lysosome of the cell to form bigger vacuole called phagolysosome. Killing and Degradation once the engulfment is completed, the killing and degradation of microorganism is the next step in phagocytosis. Most of the microorganisms are killed by the antibacterial substances present in the phagocyte and they are further degraded by hydrolytic enzymes. However, some bacteria like tubercle bacilli does not get killed by this mechanism. The disposal of microorganism involves the following mechanisms. Intracellular mechanism. Oxidative mechanism by oxygen-free radicals. 
MPO dependent, MPO independent. Oxidative bactericidal mechanism by lysosomal granules. Non-oxidative bactericidal mechanism. Extracellular mechanisms. Granules and immune system. Intracellular mechanism. The most common way for killing microbes by intracellular metabolic pathways involves oxidative mechanism and, to a lesser extent, by non-oxidative pathways. Oxidative bactericidal mechanism by oxygen-free radicals. The production of reactive oxygen species like O2, H2O2, OH, HOCl, HOI, HOBr is the most important mechanism involved in the killing of microbes. By a process called respiratory burst, the activated phagocytic leukocytes increase their oxygen consumption in the presence of an enzyme named NADPH oxidase to reduce oxygen to superoxide anion O2. Superoxide is then converted to H2O2 which has bactericidal properties. This process is carried out either by the enzyme myeloperoxidase present in the azerophilic granules of neutrophils and monocytes or they are independent of enzyme myeloperoxidase. MPO dependent killing The enzyme MPO acts on H2O2 in the presence of halides like chloride, bromide or iodide producing hypohalous acids like HOCl, HOBr or HOI. This is called H2O2 MPO halide system. This is a more powerful mechanism than H2O2 acting alone. MPO independent killing. Since mature macrophages lack the enzyme MPO, they carry out bactericidal activity by producing OH ions and superoxide singlet oxygen from H2O2 in the presence of O2 or Fe++. Microbial organisms like M. tuberculosis and Histoplasma capsulatum are destroyed by reactive oxygen species. Oxidative bactericidal mechanism by lysosomal granules. The preformed stored granule products present inside the neutrophils and macrophages are secreted into the phagosome and the extracellular environment. Along with the activity of MPO, other substances liberated by degranulation of macrophages and neutrophils include protease, trypsinase, phospholipase and alkaline phosphatase bring about proteolysis of the microbe. Non-oxidative bactericidal mechanism Some agents released as a result of degranulation of phagocytic cells do not require oxygen for bactericidal activity. These include granules. Some of the liberated lysosomal granules do not kill by oxidative damage but cause lysis of microbe inside the phagosome. This is brought about by lysosomal hydrolysis, permeability increasing factors, cationic proteins, lipases, proteases, DNases, etc. Nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a reactive free radical produced in the endothelial cells as well as macrophages by the activity of enzyme nitric oxide synthase. It is highly bactericidal in nature. Extracellular mechanism. Apart from the intracellular mechanism, the following extracellular mechanisms are available for bactericidal activity. Granules. The products of degranulation of macrophages and neutrophils 
continues to exert its effect of proteolysis outside the cell. Immune mechanism Immune-mediated degradation of microbes takes place outside the cell by mechanisms like cytolysis, antibody-mediated lysis, and cell-mediated cytotoxicity.